Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. It is Tuesday, and all of our guests today are brought to you by our friends at the Waddling Dog Pub. One of Victoria's historic watering holes welcomes you to come see why they are the talk of the peninsula. Their 50-seat patio is now open, and the return of no-cover UFC night slotted to return in June, all while showing all the NHL, NBA, playoff yeah. action, CFL, MLB. Also, swing by their attached liquor store to pick up your Donnie and Dolly swag. There are countless reasons to come, sit, stay at the Waddling Dog. We got Craig? TSN Scouting Director Craig Button. Not I would yet. imagine he's a little bit busy these days, but he normally joins us on a Tuesday. Looks like he's going to join us on a Wednesday. No, no. No, we got him? No, I don't have okay. him yet, but I will have him. So the Canucks stay, as we talked about uh, earlier. Chicago wins the NHL draft yeah. lottery yesterday. They're going to pick Connor Bedard. This just did. But the Canucks stay at number 11 in the a NHL draft lottery. Uh, lottery's been around since, what, 1995? The yep. Canucks have never, ever moved up. Vancouver Canucks, keeping the tradition alive. They've picked once at... 11. Who was it? Uh, what year? 82. Think Tiger Williams. Tiger Williams. Uh, no. It's... Tough guy. You mean tough guy. <laughs> Are you saying tough guy they picked up? No. I, I, I'm, I'm saying because... Give me the initials. Tiger Williams' reaction to the pick they made. Do you remember? No, I don't remember. Mike Tiger. Small? Come on. Uh, Gary Lupo. No. Yeah, help me. 82. Michelle Petit. Ah, oh, Michelle Petit. Of course, Michelle. Number 24, Michelle Petit. Yeah, and uh, remember Tiger Williams afterwards? Hey, I, I hear we uh, have a new draft pick, a new, new player. His name is Mike Small. Michelle Petit. Petit, I get Tiger it. was having, having some fun. Tiger's great. And M M Michelle Petit, solid National Hockey League defenseman, played close to, well, between 800 and 900 games. He bounced around, Donnie. Ten teams. He's one, of, he's one of those Brent, Ashton, Mike Sillinger yeah. uh, types. Hold All it. those guys played with the Canucks at one time or and another. J.J. Daniel, he bounced around too, uh, Donnie. Yes, another uh, infamous uh, draft yeah. pick, but it was Michelle Petit at number 11. Now, in case you think, now I don't have the, uh, the, the poor examples here, in case you think the Canucks can't get anybody uh, of any quality at number 11, keep in mind, that there's a reason Anze Kopitar wears the number oh. 11 for the L.A. Kings. He was picked 11th. So was Jerome Ginla. Oh, he wasn't picked by the Calgary Flames. He was picked by the Dallas Stars. And, and, Co and Kopitar went Flames. in the Gilbert Brule draft. I remember that. It was. Uh, it, I remember that. I remember it, that. It, well, that was also the Sydney Crosby draft. Yeah, big time yeah. in Ottawa. Crosby it was, it was held Penguins. in Ottawa. Yeah, picked first first overall. Um, and that was the Luke Bardon uh, draft, who yeah, was picked 10th right. and once uh, the, the late uh, Luke Bardon. And Kopitar ended up uh, picking, uh, being picked uh, uh, 11th. And a lot of people thought, well, I mean, he doesn't play in a very competitive league in Slovenia. Uh, he dropped, but uh, everything worked out Stud. for uh, Kopitar and certainly the Los Angeles Kings. We have Craig now. Yep. We're joined now by Better Late Than Never, TSN Scouting Director Craig Button. How are you, sir? Oh, I am good, Don. And, and, you know, Kopitar played in Sweden. You know, he was from Slovenia, but he mm. played in Sweden. Right. And, and it wasn't like he was uh, this player that wasn't uh, that wasn't being watched, it wasn't being challenged competitively. He played in the World Championships heading into his draft years, and, and he acquitted himself very, very well. I, I said this often, Donnie and Rick. If you want to find a way not to draft the player, you, you you can pick any number of reasons. Height, the weight, uh, uh, you know, n n past malady, didn't meet competition, high mm -hmm. school player. I don't know if I've shared this with you previously. It's just it's just a fact. 1988, Mike Madano was the first overall pick. Yep, yep. Linden goes two. At, at eight is Jeremy Roenick, high school player. Can't be drafting high school players. At nine was Rod Brindamore. Can't be drafting tier two players from Notre Dame, Saskatchewan. At number 10 was Timo Solani, who, uh, oh, my God, can you believe, why would you draft a, a, a finished player? And you can go back and look at who went, you know, Lyndon went two, and you can go back and look at three, four, five, six, seven. It's all because of the biases. You can yeah. you can run with any bias you want yeah. to, work, to work a case against drafting a player. That's what happened with Copenhagen. You know, my, you know what people said to me? I'll let somebody else take the chance on the first Slovenian. 
Wow. Are you watching hockey players or are you watching like players with flags on them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, Ivan Boldrev also taken at 11. Jeff Carter, Gabe Velarde. Uh, the, list, the list goes on. Brian, Brian Ralston as well. So uh, in, in, in speaking to the depth of this uh, draft, what can the Canucks get at uh, number 11? Is there enough quality there that they could uh, get a solid National Hockey League player at 11? Oh, I don't think there's any question. I, I think it's the position that you got to look at hard. I, I think there's uh, three really good defensemen that fit the bill for the uh, for the Vancouver Canucks there. You, you've heard me say this. They have, they have a terrific goaltender. They have terrific forwards. They have one number one defenseman. And if they don't start getting some better defensemen into their group and you get better defensemen by drafting them, yeah, if you want to flip a coin and you want to say, hey, in the third or fourth round, we get a guy that we think can be a top three, go ahead. But uh, the record shows that you need to be drafting players that you want to play in your in your top three defensemen. And I think there's, you know, the, the, there's the Swi- uh, the Austrian defenseman Ryan Bob, there's the two Swedish defensemen Axel Sandin Pelika and Tommy Vlander. And I think the two Swedish defensemen are the two best defensemen in the draft. Ryan is good, but that's I mean I think that the, the that the Vancouver Canucks have to put a stake in the ground and. To me, I know everybody evaluates players differently, but that's why there's three there. And and, and Ryan Bacher might not be there when they pick 11, but I don't see any other defenseman, any other defenseman after those three that, to me, projects as a top three defenseman in the NHL. Not one. Now, does that mean that somebody won't emerge potentially down the road? No, I'm not. like that, that definitely. But at this point in time is what you're dealing with. I don't see anybody that projects after those three as a top three defense. Okay, Craig, I know you talked about this, this yesterday on, or this person yesterday on uh, TSM, but tell us a little bit more about Axel Sandin Pelica, who you just talked about. Well, how about if I just tell you that he reminds me of Sergei Zuboff? And I don't throw Sergei Zuboff as a comparable out lightly. Sergei Zuboff controlled the game. He didn't do it with flash and dash he didn't do it with this overwhelming power in his game he did it with his brain he did it with magnificent puck skills and to me when i watch Axel Sandin Pelica he led Swedish defensemen at the world junior tournament in time on ice per game he was 17 years old the coach tells you that i'm watching him over the course of, uh, of the last 18 months 16 18 months and all i see is massive progression i turned to brian mudrick during the semi-final i said Hey, when this kid makes a mistake, let me know. Like he doesn't make mistakes anywhere. He doesn't overwhelm you with this with this highlight type real plays. All all he does is perform, and all he does is get the puck to the right places at the right times, in the defensive zone, in the neutral zone, in the offensive zone. And Sergey Zubov controlled the game, controlled the game, start to finish. And to me, when I watch Axel Sandin Pelica play, that's what I see in him. I think he's the best defenseman in the draft. My final list is going to come out. He will be in my top five players. That's what I – now, I'm not saying wow. that I have all the answers, but that's how I assess this guy, and I think he's that good. Craig, the Canucks were fined $50,000 by the NHL for holding on ice sessions with players in the offseason. happened uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, is this a case of where they should have known not to do this? Absolutely, they should have known not to do it. I mean, the, the, the rules with respect to the CBA are in place. And, you know, if you're going to violate them, you're, you're going to pay a penalty. And, you know, it, it, it's not like we can look at $50,000. The, the $50,000 fine is there to, to meet out a, a form of punishment. And obviously, it, it wasn't considered severe or the penalty would have been uh, higher and greater. But teams, and, and Lou Lamarillo reminded me of this when I was a manager. He goes, Right. You can look at the CBA, you can say that other people, you know, might have missed something with, with, with respect to, 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 to informing you or, or whatever. He goes, as a manager, you have to know the rules. And when the rules are not adhered to, that's on you. So that's on the Vancouver Canucks. End of story. Yeah. Uh, Craig, I hate to read the papers in Toronto if the Leafs go out in four straight. I think uh, Marner, Matthews, uh, Tavares, and Nylander, they're going to get a ton of heat. Uh, what's your read on them so far? The fabulous four, no goals in the first three games of the series with Florida.
So, Rick, uh, you know, we say that against Florida, right? Like, why don't we rewind the clock a little bit? Yeah. Let's go back to 2020. Let's go back to game five versus the Columbus Blue Jackets in the bubble. Zip, nada, nothing. 2021, game seven versus the Montreal Canadiens. That was after they were up three games to one, and they went to game seven. Zip, nada, nothing. Game six and seven last year versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. Clinching scenarios. Zip, nada, nothing. And now you get to game three after you lose the first two uh, games at home. Zip, not a nothing. Hmm. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised. Maybe that, uh, that, not maybe, there's a pattern here. There's a pattern here of them not being able to deliver when it matters the most. Now, those other, like game six last year versus Tampa Bay, that was a, that, that was a game that wasn't clinching, that didn't take you out. But you start to look at, at, at the pattern here of these players not producing what matters the most, I'm not so sure it's just uh, a one-off anymore, and that's something that's going to have to be evaluated hard if the Leafs go out here in this series versus Florida. Why is that, Craig? Why have those players not come through in, in clutch uh, moments? Is it the makeup of the team? Is it something about the way they play? What is it? You know, those are all I, – I think that, you, you know, you could say – any number of those things. It could, it could be all of them. It could be one of them. I, I think that they're really good players. And, and one of the things I believe in is really good players will be able to produce. It's hard. you got opponent now in Florida that's pushing you hard and, and, and making sure that they're going to provide every bit of resistance to what you're trying to do in your best efforts. And so that being said, I think that players have to learn it. Sometimes we want players to learn it quicker. Sometimes there's a it takes a little bit of time. And and you know we can go back and 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 look at at, at other players. You know Steve Eisenman, a great great player. You know he, he was in his 14th year in the league when he won, and there was questions: could he deliver? Alexander Ovechkin, would you ever win with Alexander Ovechkin? And there, and those questions abounded. And 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 that's just the nature of being a star player, a superstar player. And and maybe we want those answer sooner maybe we want to see evidence of that sooner when i say we i'm talking about the the fan and, and, mm -hmm. and media but sometimes may, maybe there's a timeline for them and maybe the, the experiences that they're going through will serve them sometime I, I do believe this given a choice of having austin matthews and mitch marner on my team or not i want them on my team i'll take my chances with them just like i'd take my chances with steve eisenman back in the day and i take my chances with Alexander Ovechkin, I'll take my chances. And they won. I heard the same things about Joe Thornton mm -hmm. and Patrick Marlowe. I take my chances with Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe because they're so brilliant. It doesn't mean that they're going to ultimately find a way, but but I think that they're good enough. And, you know, I think that if they do go out, given that they hadn't won a playoff series since 2004, given that the Boston Bruins went out, I think now it comes back to, okay, how do we look at this team? team and what can we do to, to to make it stronger so that we can achieve the success we all want much like the detroit red wings did after losing in the stanley cup final in 95 and 95 great record in in 96 they made some additions they added some players they made some changes with players out of their organization and then they became uh, a stanley cup juggernaut for uh uh for with three stanley cups between 97 and 2002 Outstanding, Craig. It took a while. We got you on the air, and it was worth it. Thank you so much, my friend. Thanks. Have a great day. You bet.